Picture this. It was February 1978, a very normal Thursday night, three days after my 13th birthday. Seven o'clock, Top of the Pops comes on, as normal, my favourite TV programme. Approximately three songs into the show, zap, bang, wallop, an incredible image appears on the screen. An incredibly beautiful blonde female dressed in a red and white swimsuit exposing one of her shoulders. It was love at first sight. My first schoolboy crush. The next day, everyone was talking about Blondie. And I convinced everyone that she was in fact a natural blonde with dyed dark hair at the back. I, of course, knew nothing more than anyone else about her at that time. I was in love and had all the symptoms, palpitations, increased temperature, etc. These feelings were to last for the next four years. Then suddenly, something changed. Was it me or was it the Debbie Harry solo album she released depicting her as a brunette with acupuncture needles through her head? That had turned me cold. The music too was quite different. More funk based, produced by Nile Rodgers of chic fame. The videos were alien to me. They did not depict the Debbie I had fallen in love with. They had been directed by H.R. Giger, who was responsible for creating the artwork for the Alien movies. The magic had gone for me. I didn't even buy their sixth album, The Hunter. It was official. I had shunned them from my world. And it wasn't until their split up that I realised how much I missed them. I spent years trying to find the missing Blondie album from my collection and only succeeded in finding it in the late 80s when the CDs were re-released. So my lesson had been truly learned and I have supported them ever since and have seen them every year since their reformation in 1998. I am longing for the release of their new album The Panic of Girls and looking forward to seeing them perform again.